Hello there and welcome back to KB Talks powered by the NKBA, the only podcast dedicated to sharing the latest kitchen and bath industry insights, providing you with the education and connections to help grow and support your business. I'm your host, Carl Champley. Well, folks, spring is right around the corner, which means design competition submissions will be opening soon. Now, this is an incredible season for designers as they prepare to show off their work. Joining us today is Peter Salerno, who is a 24-time national award winner. I'm going to have to check that if that's true or not. He's introduced to us the topic at the KB's Next Stage this year and has some great advice to share on the ins and outs of how to win a design competition. But before we get started, here's a very quick word from our sponsor. Are you a home repair or improvement pro looking to grow your business? Home Advisor can help. Here's how it works. Home Advisor matches homeowners looking for help with their projects with the best local pros in the area who can do the job. That means your business gets connected to new customers quickly and easily. Get started now and Home Advisor will help you find your next job. And be sure to ask if you are eligible for a limited time $100 credit when you sign up. Go to homeadvisor.com slash NKBA offer. Again, that's homeadvisor.com slash NKBA offer. And with that, we are ready to go. Peter, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to help us dive into this and give our listeners some tips on how to be a winner. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you, Carl. It's uh, great to be with you, and uh, it's going to be great to share some uh, great information with uh, my fellow designers. And uh, I've been in this industry for 40 years and be, been in competition since 2002, and uh, it is exciting. And um, I still go out there and try to put another project uh, out there and see how I compete against my fellow designers. So thank you for having me. Oh, mate, it's an absolute uh, pleasure. And, you know, everybody wants to be a winner, right? And how wonderful it is when it reflects the beautiful work that, you know, that uh, that we all do. So 40 years, this is certainly not your first rodeo. So you've won a number of design competitions as well as judged them. Can you give us, the listeners, a quick review of your experience on this topic to fire up? Well, you know, it's great because um, this past year I was able to be a, a judge in the contest. And uh, I've been a judge in other contests, but this was for the full blown out kitchen and bath uh, design contest. So uh, it was pretty intense, a lot more intense than I anticipated, which was kind of exciting seeing what's happening behind the scenes. It's, uh, it's a two-day process, um, three judges for baths, three judges for kitchens, and then we share some other duties on uh, exterior kitchens and builders' kitchens, et cetera. So uh, taking a different view of it kind of gave me a little bit more of an, a depth of insight, which I'm going to love to share with you. So the biggest thing that I, I got out of it uh, this year was that uh, the amount of work that needed to be done by the judges on sorting through all these entries – Certainly, it's um, it's great to put mm -hmm. projects in, and you know you want to see how they do. And you know we get all of these uh, great designers throughout our country get their best projects. But the uh, you know as judges, we have to take a look at these and and say uh, what's so wonderful about this? Look how exciting this is. So the way that we did it, uh, our group was that we went through. All of these entries, just a quick snapshot. You know, let's see what we have. We've got 50 in this category. We've got 60 in that one. We have 80 in this one. So just a quick snapshot. I wanted to get a feel for what the front runners were because, again, it is a visual design contest, right? So as well as your design statement is and your floor plan elevations are, it is all about visual. And uh, when we took a look at them, some of them were immediately – wow, this is definitely going to be up there. This is going to be a winner. This is so unique. I love everything about it. And, you know, we usually end up putting an asterisk by it or a number by it and going back to it a number of times because it's like a three-round situation where you look at it and then you uh, talk to your fellow judges and then you go through it again. Um, and then you finally come up with the last 10 and then you basically whittle it down to three or four and pick first, second, and third. So um, it really gave me um, a whole other view of it and how timely 
it needs to be. I mean, the judges can't sit around. We have a lot of things to do. And, uh, you know, it's pretty stressful because we want to pick the people that deserve it. I think it's stressful because you know, you're, you're certainly passionate about it and you're considerate of all the designers with their entries because I think design is sometimes difficult to judge because everybody has their own right, their own style. But, again, when it comes to a competition, there's a lot of elements that have to come into play. So in your opinion, what are the top things designers should concentrate when they're submitting their projects in the National Design Contest? So it's... It- yeah, so I mean, it's like three prong, right? So first thing is going to be certainly the photography, right? So if I had to give it a percentage, I would say photography is 70% of what is most important because, again, it is visual. Um, you want to capture the space. You want to make sure the quality of photography is up to par, you know, high resolution. Uh, and then right after that follows the design statement, which really is important because if the judges see something and they really can't figure it out or identify it or what did this, what did this uh, person have to overcome to get this final project, you know, the design statement clarifies that. And then third is the floor plan to give you an overview of what the kitchen is and also to make sure the designer knows what they're doing. Uh, safety issues, making sure there's no combustible surfaces near the stove. The electric is not over the sink or over the stove. So that's very, very important. No, it's all the real world situations when they're out there in the field that uh, that matter. And if, if not, they're going to get pulled up very quickly. So as you said, I think that, as you said, it's very visual and their design statement is certainly side by side with that, with a good, with clarity and a good explanation of exactly what's going on. Now, you also talked about photography as well. Would you say to all the designers that are listening out there, is it recommended they get it professionally photographed or if they think they're a great um you know, they're good at taking photos themselves. Do you say that's an important step? I mean, I think it's a critical step because we're looking at something and we do understand that if this goes to the final round and they do become winners, this is going to be published. So, you know, it has to be high definition. The lighting has to be right. Uh, You know, the way that you're staging it needs to be right. You're making sure that uh, the elements are captured. So it, it's an artistic, you know, as we are, as designers, we are artistic, so are, so are photographers. And and I think that you have to, if you want to take the photographs yourself and you have the equipment to do it properly, then I would say, sure, absolutely do it. But this is not something that you use an iPhone and submit it. No, it's true. I did a competition. Um, I was fortunate to pick up, pick up the, uh, the prize. However, I took the photos myself and it just didn't justify how beautiful the space was so i i totally uh agree you know um for all the designers and uh everyone listening in you know spend that extra money to get it professionally photographed because as uh, pete said it's the lighting and when you get into small spaces too it's very very difficult to get that overall you know beautiful photograph now you mentioned before the importance of floor plans and elevations how precise do they need to be and how can this impact the results? Well, I mean, we're not there with the scale, right? Mm-hmm. The time that we have, we, we don't have the time to be able to dedicate to that with the, with the scale ruler. But we do look at the overall um, design of it, making sure that they're following all of the uh, steps that the Kitchen and Bath Society has put before us. So you're yep. looking at those uh, NKBA guidelines, you're following them, you're making sure that the center lines are appropriate, you're making sure that all the dimensions on the wall are stated, the overall measurement is stated, the clearances between an island or peninsula are proper, you have the proper space between doorways when you're lowering an oven door, et cetera. So it's kind of three prongs. So one is to make sure that all the dimensions are there making sure the center lines are all there, making sure that everything is all spelled out, where the stove is, sink, dishwasher, et cetera. Then the second part is going to be the safety of it. So if they don't follow the safety procedures, if you put a stove next to a wall oven and there's no space in between it, which makes it combustible, as designers and as judges, we automatically disqualify that. So if we see that there is a safety issue an outlet behind a stove or or you have a, a combustible surface next to a stove area, then we automatically just take that right out because that designer obviously was not following the guidelines of the Kitchen and Bath Association. No, thank you. I think that is one of the most important things. And, um, you know, as a contractor designer and sometimes inspector, it's amazing how many places I will um, I will look at and they just haven't taken 
the code issues into account. And one thing too for our listeners, and Pete, I know you know this as well, I always find it amazing that I'm doing a, um, it's called Ocean Towers down in Santa Monica at the moment, and I'm, um, I'm doing one beautiful apartment, but there's a fire in another. And I walk through with the insurance agent. And you know the first thing the insurance guys always do, or gals, they walk straight into the kitchen, they get out their measuring tape, and they will measure from the top of the stove to the underside of the range hood. And if that's anything less than 18 inches, they walk out and the insurance the insurance uh, policy is void. So all of this is super important. And um, as a designer, you don't want to be embarrassed and design something that looks fantastic and beautiful, but the inspector's going to say, you're going to have to change this. This is not as per code. So I think, um, you know, judges like you with the experience, you're going to pick that up in a heartbeat. Now, do you believe a designer needs to have the winning, you know, like this competition in mind when putting a project together? And does it help to see the potential of that project being an award winner? Yeah, I mean, um, I usually, uh, two things occur when a client comes through the door. They're looking for a really beautiful kitchen that may even warrant the cover of a magazine. And I was like, well, great. You know, if we do a great job together and we collaborate on it together and it all comes together the way we're expecting it to, I don't see why that can't happen. And then you have the client that is a type A person that comes in and says, hey, I want to be first place next year in the design contest. They look at me as like, well, I don't know if I can guarantee that. You know, I can give it my best shot Mm. and we'll photograph and we'll send it in. But I'm not sure if that's possible, but we'll do the best that we can. And sometimes, I mean, I had a client that actually took second place about four years ago that came in and said, I want to be first place in the National Design Contest. And money was no object, which doesn't happen that often. When it does, it's great. And she said, I'm willing to spend whatever it takes, but I want to be first place in the National Design Contest. So the kitchen, needless to say, was about a half a million dollars, which is always a beautiful job. And uh, most people don't have that kind of budget. And we photographed it and it took second place. So she was a little disappointed, but I told her, hey, that's pretty good considering there's about 800 entries every year. I would take second any day. So, uh, you know, then we went out to dinner and kind of, you know, I gave her, I had a duplicate made of the award and gave it to her so she could put up our mantle. But, you know, you never know. A client comes in with certain expectations. But the way that I evolved to that is, As we're working with the client, you start seeing the potential of it. So initially, you have the space, you have the client being open to suggestions, you have a client that's willing to take risks and do things that are a little bit exciting and out of the box. So when you see that they're willing to do that and they're a little daring, then you can say, listen, I think we can really do something special here. I enter three or four projects annually in the National Design Contest. I think that we should enter yours because it would be really exciting. And you just wait to see them light up. And nine times out of 10, they're very excited about it. No, I can see see that working because I've had a, quite a few clients that aren't that interested in, you know, getting the word out there. And I've got a couple of celebrities at the moment that I'm, I'm doing projects for. And I would love to tell you who they are. And I'd love to show photos of what we've just done, but I cannot show anything, which hurts. But it appears to be that if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I would love to get into competition. I'd love to be the front page um, of this. It gives you the license to be a little bit more daring and creative. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Because at that point, you know that they're willing to go that extra yard. And I yeah. usually, my my second sentence after that is, you know what we can do? We can really push this to the edge of your comfort zone because If we do that, then we know we're going to get something that's really going to be edgy and exciting. So don't be afraid of color or different material or doing something different on the ceiling or let's find an exotic light fixture or have one made. And all of a sudden, they don't even know that those avenues are available to them. And they're like, oh, okay, that sounds great. Or what did you have in mind? And, you know, you start putting a number of things together and people would say, oh, really purple? You think that'll work? And Orange, you think that'll work in this kitchen? And you're like, absolutely. And luckily, we have a couple of programs that we can do a virtual reality kitchen. So they're not stressing mm-hmm. out about, you know, making the kaleidoscope of colors in their kitchen. And they could actually see it and feel good about it and say, sure, I can do that. That's, that's what I think is exciting about the industry that we're in. And, you know, also to, you know, thanks to the NKBA with the events they hold, like, you know, the various events around the year and the big event like KBiz. It just gives our designers 
a great insight, not necessarily just to trends, but to what's happening global, um, to what getting a better understanding of architecture and the, the the structure that you're designing something in. So when something like this may come your way, guys, it's just terrific just to have a blank slate and really throw your professionalism out there because people that's that's our job people are listening to what we um what we have to offer and i often find i've said it many a times i think a good designer is when you first meet the client instead of rattling off a whole bunch of things you need to really just be a good listener and when you've taken all of that content into account well out out it comes and and what a wonderful industry to be in to you know as you said to project uh, a potentially an award-winning project with with a color that's that's daring and someone would never think of using but you have to have that insight and you have to see that end result um so w- what's your what's your idea on um slipping a hundred dollar bill to the judge does that always work no i guess <laughs> if, if, if you could pinpoint one thing that separates the award winners from other entries I know this is a bit of a tough question, but what do you think that would be besides photography, um, a good floor plan? What is it, the one thing that seems to separate? Well, Carl, I think honestly, um, I think it's probably more than one, right? Because um, when when you're designing a kitchen of, you know, high scale caliber, something that really is cutting edge, the top 1% of what's out there. I think you need to have everything available to you. So color, as we spoke about before, is absolutely important. You know, use of color. I mean, as a judge, I can tell you, and as designers uh, in the industry, people do not want to see white kitchens anymore. We as designers and judges are just tired of seeing them. So uh, I'm not saying that they won't do well in a competition. If they're extraordinary, they will. But if you see 50 kitchens that are done in white and then 20 that are done in something different, you may lean towards something that may be a little bit more exciting. So maybe that's a don't, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as colors, you know, again, purple, lime green, aqua, orange, you know, I would say a pop of color somewhere. Um, I did a beautiful um, uh, La Cornu rotisserie that uh, was in this kitchen that was the focal point of it. And it was done in a, a beautiful purple. And I just said, you know, why don't we do a lime green tile around it to really make that pop? And the client was like, what? Really? Do you think that'll work? And I said, absolutely. It's almost to the point where I said, listen, I will buy the tile, we will install it, and if you have a reservation that doesn't look good, I will replace it for to you for no charge. They were like, okay, I, I, can, I can buy into that. And then once it went up, they were like, wow, that looks amazing. I was so afraid of doing it, but now that it's there, I love the contrast between the purple and the green. So, you know, sometimes you have to maybe push the envelope more than you want to, but at the end of the day, that's what designers do, right? True. I think what also drives that too is your confidence in saying absolutely. If they said, oh, do you think that'll work? And if your response was, um, I think it will, <laughs> you have to go in there, you have to be confident, you have to know your thing and say absolutely it's going to work. And quite often when that finished result is there and you have somebody walk in, they're just flabbergasted how beautiful it is. Sometimes too, if I've had a client where it's difficult, as you know, a backsplash or splashback, as we say in Australia, um, it's really something you see day in and day out. Sometimes I've put them on boards and I've just put it up against that countertop and the cabinetry to see what people think instead of actually installing it. But but I like what you said. You go in with the confidence and it's there to stay. And the beautiful thing about colour too, Peter, is, you know, there's, there's such a science with colour, isn't there? You know, with the oranges, it entices the appetite. And that's why we see the McDonald M in that orange-yellow colour and every color has a science to it. But one more thing too, that in Australia, um, this is just for everyone listening in, what are the benefits of winning an international design contest? And I'll let you feed in a little bit more with this. But whenever I've done a property and we've, it's been a fixer up or we've purchased it, we've made it look stunning. If we have made the front page of a magazine or just been in the magazine, it really helps to sell that property um it really does and as soon as that emotion kicks in and people said oh guess what this place it was the front page of this and that 
it seems to really make a difference. So I think for all you designers out there, let your clients know that there are a lot of great benefits into winning an international design contest. Any more on that? Yeah, I mean, um, just a, a couple of other things as a judge that I was looking for and some of the other judges were too. So use of color was one thing. Another one was uh, using unique elements. Uh, for example, uh, reclaim tin ceilings from the French Quarter, um, reclaim leather belts, coconut shell backsplashes, concrete countertops with fiber optics in it, uh, ceiling details, coffered ceilings, vaulted ceilings, mirrored ceilings, multi-level soffits, timber trusses. I mean, that. Uh, if you win a design contest, it's not one thing. It's a layered approach. It's multiple things. If you look at a kitchen, if you look at any of the award winners in the previous years, you'll see that one thing will hit you, but when you start looking at it, there's layers of different detail. And all of those layers come out because when judges start examining that that, that photograph, they start seeing, well, look at this. This is really interesting. And then to support it with the design statement, pointing out what the designer did and how he layered this, this, um, this kitchen or this bathroom really makes a difference. You know, floor de detailing, how important is that? Using timber and tile on the floor or concrete, mosaic, or light fixtures, yeah. something that you found, something that you made, something that's multiple colors or metals, copper, painted black, stainless steel, glass, crystal. Uh, I mean, one of my clients, uh, I, I have a, an artist who creates Swarcy crystal ceilings for me, if you could imagine. So we purchased $10,000 mm. of Swarcy crystal. We hit it with a hammer, break it into small nuggets, and then she glues them to these reclaimed tin ceilings that we put together as a ceiling detail over an island and she glues them in place, and sometimes they're different colors. They're, they're blues and, and clear colors, and, and then she paints the background in probably like a silver with a, with a, a white uh, glazing on it, and we put these ceilings that are twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 over these islands or bathroom ceilings, and all of a sudden, you have jewelry. You have something that nobody else has, and I have one in my showroom here. When people just glance up, they do a double take. They can't believe what they're looking like. Is that Swarcy crystal on your ceiling? Yes. Also with two show and back chandeliers on either side. It's like the bling. You've given it bling. You've, you've dressed exactly. it up with jewelry. No, that's amazing. Hey, listen, I've seen your website too, and um, I think the police are on their way over now because the graffiti <laughs> artist doing, <laughs> doing a bathroom or something and of the uh, skyline of New York City, and it looked fantastic. So this all equates to just – being creative and getting out there and doing something fantastic like that. So, so here's a funny story. So I, this is, that's in my showroom, right? So I said, I can't do a regular powder room in here. People are expecting to see what does a designer have in their powder room? What could this person create? So I turned around and I actually went to New York. I interviewed graffiti artists and I said, listen, I'm thinking about doing this bathroom and I want to do a manhole cover on the floor. I want to do corrugated steel on one side. I want to use a bathroom sink up against the wall. I want to do a, mm -hmm. a 3D light fixture over the sink. And I have a thought about doing the New York City skyline with the subway looking like a roller coaster. So two people looked at me like I was smoking something. The, the, yeah, the third well, person the just cup. said, wow, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'll do it. And she came in here and over a weekend, she created this. I gave her some guidelines, but I said, listen, this is you. This is your art form. I want you to just use what I'm saying, but just use your creativity to put this together. And I can tell you, Carl, I get so many compliments on that bathroom. And people just come, when they walk in there, they just go, you're the guy I need to work with because if this is what you're doing to this bathroom, what are you going to do to my home? Yeah, exactly. That's the beautiful thing about this industry and for everyone listening in, just be creative, be bold. I always think you want to, you want to create something where in 10 or 20 or 30 years you look back and think, wow, that was just a big impact and it still is. Well, Peter, I want to thank you um, so much for joining us. I think there's a lot of good information um, that we've just shared out here. And, of course, it's a podcast, folks. If you missed it, just listen to it again and get these amazing tips from Pete Saluno. Peter, what's your website that people can check check you out on? Yeah, so it's uh, Peter Salerno Inc., www.petersalernoinc. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Again, a lot of good stuff, I think, with photography, with the statement, with the plan, and um, not being shy. 
and getting out there and being creative. All right, Peter, well, thank you so much for joining us. I know we will bump heads soon. And, folks, there's going to be new episodes of KB Talks coming your way very soon. So subscribe and stay tuned. And please be sure to send your feedback to nkba at flyingcampbell.com. And remember to take a moment and leave us a star rating or a review wherever you listen to your podcast. If you do that, Peter's going to give you a $100 bill. Now stay tuned for a quick NKBA Minute. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Carl Champley. And remember to get out there and design something terrific. The NKBA Specialty Badge Program offers members a new competitive edge. Certification has long been a cornerstone of the National Kitchen and Bath Association's mission, although the designations are mostly limited to designers. The Specialty Badge Program now allows any NKBA member to broaden their knowledge and earn credentials in a variety of areas through online course materials and passing an online exam. Visit nkba.org slash badges to discover the NKBA Specialty Badges currently available. Take advantage of the NKBA's ongoing professional development opportunities and get the NKBA Competitive Edge. Thank you.